All right, welcome everyone to today's webinar. Today we are doing intro to streaming services. Uh, Rebecca will be our instructor today, uh, but before I introduce Rebecca, I would like to go over a couple of details about Zoom. Um, we are recording today's webinar. Uh, the recording will be available on our YouTube channel uh, after the webinar, probably within a week or so. Uh, we do also send out a follow-up email with that link and then also uh, answers to any questions you might have um, that will go into that email as well. And also a uh, copy of the handout for today, which I will also paste the link in the chat in case you wanna get to the handout right away to see it. Um, it will take you outside of Zoom, but then you can jump back into, into Zoom if you like. And if you need help with that, just let us know. Um, we do also have live transcriptions enabled today. So down below, you will see, a, it's a little square that says CC, that is live transcriptions. So you can enable those. If you would like to see uh, the uh, words down below on the screen, uh, if you find them distracting or you don't want them there, you can also tap on it and say hide auto transcriptions and that'll hide it. Um, you will also see down there, there's a raise hand button. We use the raise hand button in case you wanna ask your questions out loud where we will um, ask to unmute you so that you can ask your question aloud yourself. Uh, other ways we do use the chat. Uh, so if you'd like to, any questions you have, you can post them in the chat. Go ahead and type them out. Uh, the chat, if you see down below next to that raise hand button, there's a little comment bubble. That is the chat. So you can go ahead and enable that if you want and pop it up on the side. Um, and that's where you can type any uh, questions you might have. Or if Rebecca asks any questions of us, uh, you can put your answers in the chat. So, okay. Um, and then I think that's everything I wanted to cover here. The library is open our regular hours now, so you're welcome to come in. Um, we are following CDC guidelines, so we are asking folks to uh, wear a mask when they come into the building, um, but you're welcome to do that, or we still have our curbside service. Um, we still have the ability to print stuff out and bring it curbside to you um, and to pick up your materials that way. So, all right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything over to Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca is a library associate here at the Champaign Public Library, and she works at the Ask Here desk on the second floor and also on the first floor. And she assists me with tech workshops, including teaching many of the tech workshops like she will do today. <laughs> yes. All right, Rebecca, take it away. <laughs> All right. Let me jump right in and welcome everybody. We are covering intro to streaming today. Let me share my PowerPoint. So again, like Susan was saying, we're going to have this PowerPoint um, as well as the recording available soon after class, hopefully within a week, but not too far in the future. OK, I hope you're seeing my PowerPoint. I am. OK, cool. So let's just jump right in intro to streaming so you've probably been at home streaming some stuff recently and come to this class learning a little wanting to learn a little bit more so let's jump right in so today we have a few agenda items so what is streaming we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about what cord cutting is you've probably heard that phrase before cord cutting We'll also talk about things to consider when you're considering maybe adopting a streaming streaming service. That's hard to say. Or maybe you're thinking about cutting the cord, getting rid of your cable, and you're just wondering how to go about doing that. So we'll talk about some streaming service models. We'll also talk about providers. We'll also touch on some of the library's streaming services. So if you're not familiar with Hoopla and Canopy, we're going to touch on those really quickly. We're not going to dive too deep into those. We do have a class that is devoted to Hoopla and Canopy that we can link to later as well. And then we're going to talk about additional resources. So once you're all done with the class, you can access resources afterwards. OK. So what is streaming? You've probably heard all about it. Everything recently now seems like it's streaming, right? So streaming is, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, the definition, playing continuously as sound or moving images are sent in a flow directly from the internet to a computer. So ooh, that sounds kind of jargony. I put a couple other um, definitions in there that I thought were a little bit better. So streaming media is basically your method of transmitting or receiving data, uh, especially video, audio over a computer network as a steady continuous flow and it's going to allow play playback to start while the rest of the data is being received. So basically 
in a nutshell, it's going to allow you to start watching the material before it's all been downloaded to your computer. So sometimes um, with certain services, you may have to download something completely before watching it. But with streaming, you can start watching it right away and the data will constantly be updating it. So the streaming is referring to the process of it delivering to your computer rather than the medium itself. So that's the delivery method rather than the actual medium, if that makes sense. It'll make more sense when we jump into more of the nitty gritty. So we do have sort of two pictures up here. So streaming, yes, it does kind of come from that actual stream. So you know, as a stream flows, you're you're doing the same thing. You're getting that information flowing to you from the server or from the service that you subscribe to onto your computer continuously going. Um, I do have a picture there of a faucet that's kind of got a drip falling out of it too. Um, a faucet, we kind of use that one as a to refer to your internet speed. So you may have a faucet that allows you to open the water flow on the top on your handle there. So as you pull the handle open, more water will flow out quicker. So it's kind of like that with the internet is if you have a higher internet speed, you're gonna have more of that data flowing through it and it's gonna be flowing faster. If you have a slower internet speed, you might notice that less of that data is coming through quickly. So your experience might not be as high quality or as fast as something with a higher internet speed. We're gonna to touch on internet speed in a, in a little bit too. So don't feel like that's just all we're going to talk about. Cord cutting. You probably heard that before. So cord cutting refers to when viewers or listeners cancel their subscriptions. So maybe they've canceled their cable subscription, their satellite TV, their radio in favor of going with those internet based services. So maybe they're unsubscribing to Xfinity or DirecTV in uh, favor of Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime. Um, so that's kind of referred to as cord cutting. Sometimes it also refers to people who are opting out of their phone. So they may no longer have a landline phone in their house. They may just be using their cell phone. Um, and there is another term coined in 2011 called cord nevers. So that's for people who have never actually subscribed to uh, cable TV. So maybe they're younger users who don't find the need to go to cable TV. They just want to get those streaming services. So those are cord nevers. Any questions about definitions so far? No questions so far. Okay. So there are quite a few things to consider when you're considering streaming. And the important thing is there is no right way to start with it. Basically, what you can do is you can figure out what you want to watch or listen to and then find those right combination of providers and services that work for you. So something that works for somebody may not work for you and vice versa. It just depends on what you want to do. And you may find that cord cutting is not the right choice for you. So you may find that you do want to keep some of your cable subscriptions and um, maybe supplement those with some streaming services, it may end up being more cost efficient. So you may find that if you give up your cable and you cut all of that stuff out, that you spend more on getting all of those things that you wanted through streaming. So the, the ideal point is finding what's right for you. And you may find that being a combination of cable and streaming. I know a lot of people have that. My parents do. Um, I don't have any cable subscription. I just have internet and we have streaming, but a lot of people have that combination and it's not one or the other. You don't have to go want just streaming or just cable. Um, and basically, again, I should reiterate, this is a, this is the intention of this workshop is to provide this information as a frame of reference. So I'm not going to point you into a direction that's going to be like, you should do this or you should do that. It's just giving you some ideas of where you might want to go with your experience with streaming. Okay, some more things to consider. So you might think about a few things before you start subscribing. So what kind of viewer or listener are you? What kind of content do you want? What kind of equipment 
what kind of equipment might you need? Um, I know a lot of the newer stuff, you might have to have a newer TV. You might have to have a certain um, thing that plugs into your TV. We're going to get into more of that in a second. Uh, what internet service provider do you have? And will it be up to speed with some of the streaming stuff you're going to need? So what's your internet speed? What are costs versus services? You might also consider, do you want TV shows? Do you want movies? Do you want sports, news channels? Are you interested in going ad free? Do you care if there's commercials for your streaming experience? Are you wanting to catch stuff live or are you okay with seeing episodes after they air? I know a lot of water cooler talk is all about, you know, did you catch that new episode last night? Are you okay with being spoiled on something or catching it later? Um, what is your screen size? A lot of streaming services you can watch through your TV. Um, you can watch through your laptop. What type of screen do you wanna watch on? You can even watch on your phone. Not a lot of people like that size, but that is an option. And where do you wanna watch? Do you wanna be able to watch it anywhere or do you have to be at a specific spot? Do you have to be at home? Do you have to be connected to the internet? And what are some of your favorite channels that you are wanting to watch? There's a lot of different streaming services with certain channels out there. For instance, there's a Disney streaming service. There's NBC has their own streaming service. Um, I know a lot of sports stuff, they have their own streaming services. I think ESPN has their own. So consider that as well. If you're gonna switch to streaming stuff, are you gonna be able to catch your favorite channels and networks? Are you going to be able to catch your favorite shows? So for instance, maybe one show is only available on a certain streaming service and it's not available on a different one. So we're going to do a little research to figure out what, how, to, how to find that out, but consider that as well. Not everything is available on every service. Um, some services also have original content. So for instance, you might um, have heard of some original series from maybe Netflix or Hulu. HBO has original stuff. Also exclusive content. So certain streaming services have exclusive content to certain shows. So for instance, NBC's streaming service Peacock, they have exclusive rights to The Office. For instance, that was in the news when Netflix lost the rights to that because NBC was taking those back for their streaming service. Um, I think HBO Max has the exclusive rights to the friend to friends the tv show um, i think harry potter is also one of the ones recently that was snapped up by a streaming service so think about that when you're looking for your streaming services one of the big things to consider as well is cost so will you need to buy something to make your streaming services work for you do you have to buy a smart tv do you have to buy a streaming device will one service provide everything that you want to watch or listen to or do you need to subscribe to multiple services so they are going to cost something some are free and some pro provide free episodes, but for the most part, you're going to be spending money on these streaming services. Um, now with the library services, they're totally free, but again, you want to consider, is that going to encapsulate everything that I want out of that service? Um, and again, it might vary from service to service, so you might find some services are more expensive than others especially if they're um, dependent on ads. Like for instance, Hulu offers an ad-free service that you can pay a little extra for and you don't have to watch the ads. Um, and you might also consider how many devices or people do you want to have access to these services? So for instance, with Netflix, I think you can put up to five people on one account. Um, certain sports services are very restrictive as far as how many people can watch at the same time. So you'll wanna consider that as well when you're thinking about subscribing. And a lot of people share their services as well. Um, for instance, my dad pays for Netflix and he lets us have an account with his Netflix. So we have our own little channel on there that we can watch our Netflix on. And that's pretty common. Sometimes people go, they put their money towards a service and they all share it. So that's a thing that happens as well. 
So again, there's going to be different rules for different providers and different costs. So consider that when you're thinking about streaming. Any questions so far? And remember too, you can also raise your hand and we can unmute you to ask a question if you prefer that method. Yes. But no questions so far. Okay. So let's get a let's dive a little bit deeper into some of the equipment that you might need to consider when you're going streaming. So you probably have heard of a smart TV. Smart TVs will allow you to put certain apps onto your TV. For instance, Netflix has an app that you can get on a smart TV. You can get a Hulu app. You can get the Hoopla app, the Canopy app. There's a bunch of different apps that you can get. It's basically like a like a kind of like an iPad almost, just huge. You can get um, different apps that will help you stream those things so you don't have to watch it on your laptop or your phone. Um, you, you also may consider a laptop or a phone if you wanna watch that way. So a lot of people watch stuff on their tablet or their smartphone, maybe they're at work and they wanna watch Netflix during their lunch hour. You can stream that way as well. And I put up some logos here. So Samsung has the line of smart TVs. You might have heard of Roku TVs. Um, those are pretty popular. LG also has smart TVs. I would say most newer TVs nowadays that are being sold are smart TVs. And here is sort of a screenshot of what your smart TV screen may look like. So for instance, at the bottom right there, you'll see a Roku TV. And those have some of the streaming apps. So for instance, you see the Netflix app on there, Hulu. I have a Roku streaming device that I plug into my TV via the HDMI port. And it kind of replicates the look of the Roku TV. So I can switch between my different streaming apps. I can switch between YouTube, Netflix, HBO. And it makes it really easy and consolidates all of my streaming services onto one screen. So I can just flip around to whatever I want. And then on the left side there, I think that's Samsung's smart TV. Now they all look slightly different, of course, depending on your brand. So yours might look different if you have a smart TV. Maybe you have an LG TV or something else, some other brand. But that's just kind of a view that you might see. So you can get into your app store on the TV and put those apps on your home screen. So plug-in devices, I talked about my Roku before, but there are a couple of other ones as well. So there's Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire Stick, Apple TV, and Roku. There's probably a couple other ones that we don't have listed here, but these are, I would say, the main streaming devices that you may encounter, like if you're going into a store to buy something. Um, and again, they're gonna vary depending on what you buy just because they're branded differently. So your Roku device will look different than your Amazon Fire Stick. But for the most part, all of them should be able to stream the same content. And we do have a link um, down at the bottom there that talks about an antenna. So you may consider buying an antenna if you wanna stream local channels. So for instance, we have a Roku device that's plugged into our TV, but we also wanna get local news channels. So we went ahead and bought uh, an antenna so that we could get those local channels as well. We did talk about internet speed just slightly, but it is useful when you go to streaming to think about what kind of internet service provider you wanna go with and the internet speed. So you may want to look at some online reviews and research and pick an ISP in your area. So ISP just stands for Internet Service Provider. So that would be something like Xfinity. Maybe you have um, a fiber internet. I think there's fiber internet in the area in Champaign-Urbana. Um, I think they're called I3. Um, there's, I think, what else internet service provider is there? Direct TV, I think, does internet. AT&T. AT&T, that's the other one. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> AT&T, my parents have AT&T. Yeah. I have Xfinity. I, a lot of times they're bundled together with your, your um, existing cable plan too, so. Yes, yes. 
And then internet speed is also something you want to think about. So again, how much speed you have depends on like how much you're paying per month. So the more you pay, the more you get really. So with, with internet being the way it is in this country, um, it's not, we wish it was a utility because it would make it a little cheaper, but sometimes you do have to pay for that extra speed. But you might see the benefit there because it will prevent some lags. It will prevent buffering and skipping. So if you have a lower I, um, uh, lower internet speed, you might experience some issues when you're streaming because it might not be able to catch up to the quality. So if you're streaming high quality, especially, you probably want a higher internet speed. And we're gonna do a little speed test in a second so that you can figure out what you might already have. Um, but again, HD and 4K video is more and more what is being streamed. So that may require more speed. And it is measured in megabits per second. So you may see a little abbreviation for that is MBPS. And you'll see that on my uh, PowerPoint there at the bottom, MBPS. Any questions so far? No questions so far. Oh, yes, we do have a question. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Um, they have raised their hands, so I'm going to go ahead and allow them to talk. Okay, and all you have to do is hit that unmute button. Hi there. Hi. If you want to stream something on your TV, and it's a smart TV, you still need to get one of the special devices. Is that what no, you don't have to. So okay. with a smart TV, you can put the apps right onto the TV. You don't have to get a special device. Sorry, I didn't make that more clear. But the device is optional um, depending on your TV. So if you have a smart TV and you're finding that you can get those apps on your TV, you don't necessarily need to buy the streaming device, such as a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick. Well, how do you get the apps on your TV? So you'll probably want to look at your TV's manual and it should outline how to get into your app store. But usually you can go online as well and type in your TV and we can do that at the end of class too. And I'll show you how to how to find out how to do that. But there usually is a way to get into your app store on your TV. You might have to go into your menu or your settings. And it usually should say app store and then you can search within that app store to find out like find which app you're looking for. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Okay. Any other questions. Um, I don't see any other raised hands, but again, feel free to raise your hand if you do have a question. We can let you let you ask out loud or feel free to type it in the chat. And I'll, I should say as well, um, again, usually newer TVs are smart TVs, so you don't necessarily need those streaming devices. Um, I have an older TV that needs a streaming device because it's not a smart TV and I can't download those apps but I still have an HDMI port on the back where I can plug that device in and basically turn my TV into something that can stream those channels. Yeah. And mine is old enough that I, there are some apps that I cannot get and some that I could. So in some cases I use a Google Chromecast where then I can get the thing up and ready and going on my laptop. But since that's a small enough screen, I can cast it to my television, which is a bigger screen. So um, it just kind of depends on what your setup will be like. Yes. And um, if you want to send us an email too to follow up, we can always help you do some research on how to get those apps on your TV. We've done that for people before. Okay, so let's just jump into how to test your internet speed. So there's a number of ways you can do it. We're going to go through speedtest.net, but there are some other websites you can go through. It doesn't have to be just one site. You can test it across multiple sites. So let me jump into an internet page here and we can test it. Okay, I hope you're seeing our website. Yes. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to speed test, speed test dot net. So this will be your page if you're visiting speedtest.net. And I'm just going to hit go. And that's going to start to figure out what my internet speed is. So it might take a second. It's just getting all that for me. It's First, it's going to do my download speed. So how fast I can download something or stream something over the internet. So you'll see that MBPS down there at the bottom. That's, again, the megabits per second. And then my upload speed. So that's how fast I can upload something to the internet. And it's saying down here some more information too. So I believe this South Holland, Illinois, that's where our server is connecting to. So that's the speed that we have 168. And this might change depending on the time of day or what you're doing on the computer. Um, especially at the library, we have a lot of users on our network. So it might change depending on what time of day it is or how many people are in the building. And of course, yours might look different depending on what your speed is at home. Google also has an internet speed test. So let's just Google speed test and see what happens. So right here up at the top, I have Google's internet speed test. I can click run speed test, and then Google's going to do their thing and going to tell me what it is. And, and Rebecca, usually, go ahead. Can I interrupt for just a second? Oh, yeah. Um, is the test uh, free or, and do your internet service providers tell you where to go when? Yes, the test is free. Um, usually the internet service provider that you are subscribed to, they'll have their own test. They may, like if you're troubleshooting with them, they may ask you to, to go to get your internet speed tested on a site. So let's see if Xfinity has one. Xfinity, let's see, looks like they do. And there's probably one on AT&T as well I can test. AT&T internet. Yes, it looks like they do. It looks like they're on their support page is where they have their internet speed test at. I think they're doing the same. It looks like they're using speedtest.org. It's got that same mm -hmm. LLC name down there at the bottom. And it's got the speed test thing up here in the top. The logo, yeah. So yeah, it doesn't hurt to do it maybe on more than one site and you kind of get an average for what it may be. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So that's a good way to test. Maybe if you have something going on, you notice your streaming is, is not up to par where it usually is, you can go to one of these sites and just test your internet speed. And then maybe you can figure out why that is. Maybe you've downloaded a lot. It's hard to, it's hard to tell me tell you exactly what's happening just from the speed test, but this will help you if you're going to go to troubleshoot with your internet service provider, they may want that number from you. Okay. Any other questions about doing an internet speed test? I'm gonna I can uh, mention one thing real quick. If you have more than one person, using the internet in your home at a, at a, the time that you're testing this, you will see your download and upload speeds decrease a bit. And that's just because you, if you have, the more people you have accessing um, the internet at the same time and doing things like streaming or downloading stuff or taking up a lot of the uh, bandwidth, um, you'll notice that decrease a little bit too. Yes. So that happens at the library sometimes when we have a lot of people in the building too. Some people come up and they say, hey, your internet's a little slow today. And we'll go, yep, I think it's because there's a lot of people in the building or maybe someone's downloading something big from our network. Okay, let me go back to my PowerPoint here. Let me get back to my, okay. I hope you're seeing my uh, presentation. We are. Okay, cool. 
All right, let's talk about some service models now. We talked a little bit about them before, but you can kind of break them into some different categories here. So there's the streaming live TV, radio, music. There's also on-demand service models and then free service models. So streaming live, for instance, would be maybe you're streaming live from iHeartRadio.com. Maybe you're streaming AT&T's TV live. Xfinity also has a live streaming. I think it's just called Xfinity Stream. So that's where it's streaming live for whatever is broadcast on TV or radio currently. On demand is a little different. On demand would be something that you as a user are choosing to watch at that time. So for instance, maybe you're going onto Netflix and you're scrolling through and you're hitting that play button when you find something that you wanna watch. So that would be on your time, you get to pick it, you're choosing it, it's not on already. And then there's free options. So we have our library services, Hoopla and Canopy, and those are on-demand services. So you would be choosing what you wanna watch from there. Um, some free services also offer some full episodes and some news channels. So for instance, I know that um, Peacock, that is the NBC streaming service, they do offer some free episodes. I think some shows you can get like one or two seasons for free, and then you have to pay for the other seasons by subscribing to their service. Some news channels off offer some free um, streaming, like CNN, I think offers some free streaming. But I think after a certain amount of time, they do ask you for a login or to subscribe to their service. So it's sometimes only up to a certain point that you can get something for free. Um, with our services at the library, you can get anything on Hoopla and Canopy for free at any time. You don't have to pay for any of those services. Um, and again, many subscription, um, many streaming services are subscription based. So you're gonna pay either a monthly or a yearly fee to access their content. Um, and sometimes they will ask you, for instance, Disney Plus might ask you to pay for a year and they may give you a discount for paying for that full year versus month to month. And some services will also let you rent content. So for instance, Amazon Prime sometimes will let you rent movies. Maybe it's $2.99, maybe it's $4.99, depending on the title, depending on the quality of the content. And others will, again, they might offer free content. So keep that in mind. Um, all services are not necessarily everything paying, but you may pay for that extra. So you may pay for ad free, you may pay to access more content, you may pay to access exclusive content. So keep that in mind. And all of these things listed here is not everything available. So these are just examples. There's so much more than just this in terms of service models. Come on, why is my thing not going forward? There we go. And here are some more providers you've probably heard of. Now, again, this is not an exhaustive list and these are changing all the time. So Paramount Plus was just a recent one that I had to add because it used to be CBS All Access. They changed to Paramount Plus. HBO Max used to be HBO Now, which used to be just regular HBO. And wasn't there HBO Go at one point? <laughs> there was an HBO Go. <laughs> Things are just changing very quickly. So even like six months from now, it could be totally different. Um, it is also why we usually run, we usually run this, um, this workshop once a season. <laughs> yes. So keep that in mind when you're out there looking for stuff, things may have changed. Consumer Reports also has a great guide to streaming video services that we have linked at the end of the, um, at the end of the handout. So you'll have a link to that as well. And we have a subscription to Consumer Reports. So if you go through our website, you can get that for free. PC Magazine also has a comparative list of some of the best streaming services for this year. Um, it will give you kind of a compare chart where you can go and look, okay, what's the price? What do I get for it? What comes on it, et cetera. And that's also linked in the handout as well. And again, that's not gonna cover every single streaming service, just what they consider the best services. Any questions about providers?
No questions so far. Okay. Let's talk about library services since those are free and I use them all the time and they're great. <laughs> so we have Hoopla and Canopy. Hoopla, you can get up to 20 items per month for free. Those include ebooks, audiobooks, comics, but they also include music, movies, and TV shows. So you can get that Hoopla app for your phone. You can get that for your tablet. You can also get that on your smart TV. I have it on my Roku as well. So look out for that on your smart TV or your streaming device. So you're going to be able to stream device, stream those titles over an internet connection or download to your device. So with a tablet and a phone, you can download those when you're in the Hoopla app. So maybe you've checked some movie out. You can download it and then watch it without an internet connection. For you'll see the items check out for a certain amount of time. So for ebooks, audiobooks, and comics, 21 days. Movies and TV will be three days. Music will be seven days. And the cool thing about Hoopla and Canopy is there's no waiting and no fees. So you don't have to worry about waiting for someone to return an item and you don't have to worry about it being overdue because it will return itself. Canopy is pretty similar. It's 20 items per month. The main difference I would say between Canopy and Hoopla is that you have to stream titles over an active internet connection. It won't let you download those items to a device. And the movies and TV shows from Canopy will check out for 72 hours. And it, a lot of the stuff on Canopy is more like independent movies, art house movies, documentaries. There are some TV shows on there and there's the great courses as well. That's a pretty popular one. Mm -hmm. We can include the link to our video, our recording of um, how to access these in the follow-up email too. Yes, we just did a class on Hoopla and Canopy not too long ago. Okay, so I touched earlier on what you might consider when you're starting to do streaming. When you're doing that, you're thinking about what you want to watch, right? So how do you figure out what show or TV or show or TV show or movie is available on what service? So I've have heard about this site called justwatch.com and it's a really great site to determine what streaming service may have the content you want to watch. So let's dive into that and use that. I use this all the time when I'm trying to find something to watch. Same. <laughs> it's a really, really <laughs> great resource. Yeah. Um, I'll use us as an example. We were, we just recently were looking to watch Karate Kid uh, and uh, we checked out the movie from here at the library too. But then we discovered, uh, we went and looked at Just Watch to find out if we could get it streaming um, and where we could stream it from. Okay, so this is justwatch.com. I hope you're seeing that website. Yes. So basically what you can do is you can either browse the content that's available or you can search for its specific titles. So let's go ahead and click discover movies and TV shows. And what's going to pull up here is um, all of the titles that you have selected for certain services. So up in the top left corner, you see I have Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney Plus as all of the stuff that I have showing here in these scrolling lists. But I can change this depending on what services I have. So this will create a page where I can go and then browse. Maybe I'm looking for a movie to watch and I don't want to have to flip between all of my services to find something. I just want it all on one page and that way I can scroll through and see something. So let me change this. Let's take Disney. Let me see if I can take these off here. Here we go. So I'm going to uncheck Disney. What else do I have? I have Hulu and HBO. I'm going to take off Netflix. So for instance, maybe you have some of these services and you want to check mark them on or off. And that way it's going to give you, again, that list of stuff that's available on your services. So there we go. You saw it updated. Now this is going to let you kind of browse. So then you can go and say, OK, those services that I have, these are what's available on there. And I can kind of just do my browsing. So then I can go and maybe find something to watch. Let's see. 
Let's do Shrek. You can't go wrong with Shrek. So you see, as soon as I click on that title, it's going to give me another page and it's going to say watch now up here at the top and it's going to tell me where I can watch it so I can stream it from Hulu or I can rent it from Apple TV. They have an app as well. It's going to give me a little more info about the movie itself, the runtime, the rating, directors, synopsis, who's in the movie. And then some more of the stuff, maybe people who have liked Shrek also like other movies. Let me go back home. And these are lists that Just Watch has created, but the most I use Just Watch for is searching. So let's search for something. Does anybody have a suggestion of something I can search for? If you do, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. If you've been curious about where you might be able to find a certain movie or a certain TV show. Well, I've, I recently uh, have heard good things about Ted Lasso, but, and then I thought it was on Hulu, but I don't think that's right. Yeah, so let's maybe, search that. Maybe you can tell me what streaming service it's actually on. Okay. So I did Ted Lasso. It looks like it's streaming. There's two seasons on Apple TV Plus. Let me click on the title. So it says, watch now Apple TV Plus. If I hover my mouse over that little icon, it's gonna tell me what it is. Apple TV Plus pops up there. And two seasons. So keep that in mind too. It might say how many seasons are on there. And then if I click on it, it's going to take me out to the Apple TV Plus page where I can see the information for that. Thank you. Yeah. And the cool thing about this page, too, is you can click on actors. So maybe you're looking for stuff you can stream with the actor Jason Sudeikis. And then it's going to show me what stuff is available on what streaming platforms. So for instance, it looks like he was in Horrible Bosses and that's available to stream on HBO Max or I can rent it or buy it from these other services. And again, if I don't know what this little icon is, I can just hover my mouse over it and it will tell me. So it's available to rent on YouTube, Google Play, Apple TV, Amazon. It looks like another movie is streaming on Netflix and this little HD next to it that is telling me the quality. So it's in high definition quality. Oh, it looks like I see a movie called Colossal is available on Canopy. We actually, if I can interrupt you, that's a great segue, uh, Rebecca, to a question we just received in chat uh, about the arrangement between the library and services like Hoopla and Canopy. Um, so uh, curious to know if we pay an annual fee um, or how that works. As far as I know, yes, we pay Canopy a fee. I'm not exactly sure if that's a fee per checkout from users or if we just pay a regular fee per year. Um, that would probably be a question for our technical services department or I'm not actually sure. Yeah, who, but it is. Which it department is, of ours pays for that? It is built into our, into our um, budget, collections budget um, yes. that we have here at yes. the library so that we can so that we can offer it to the public for free with your yes. champagne library card. Yeah, and some other libraries too offer different streaming services. So the library in my hometown, I'm not from Champaign, I'm from in the Chicago area. My hometown library offers Acorn TV as a subscription service. They pay that service and they get that for their patrons. A lot of other libraries have different stuff depending on what their budget calls for yeah. and depending on what their people want. Yes. Uh, um, can you put a particular subject matter on justwatch.com? Uh, I think so. Is there a suggestion for a sub for a topic? Maybe like a sport or something. Um, let's do soccer. So it looks like it's at least going to pull up anything that has that as a title. Let's see if we do filters, what that does. Oh, yeah, genres. You got 
that's going to be your comedy history, things like that. Yeah, I recommend just going on Just Watch. There is so many things you can toggle on and off. I recommend going on there and just kind of playing around on the website. You can also get the Just Watch app. I have it on my phone. Um, I don't know if you can do a subject search specifically. Most of this is, I think, just like within the title or an actor or like a director. Let me go back home. You can also browse their new and popular lists as well. Popular. And again, it's going to filter depending on what you have selected for your apps. So keep that in mind. If you go on to Just Watch, you might have like 14 different apps up here and it might not show you something if you're browsing that you can see because maybe you don't subscribe to that service. So keep that in mind. You may want to toggle on and off these apps up here for your streaming services. Because I know it's not fun when you find something you want to watch and then you can't find a service that you can watch it on. So yes, Hoopla and Canopy will show up on here. Um, so library stuff will. I just watched something the other day that was on Hoopla. Let's see if it shows up here. Yep, right there, streaming on Hoopla. So subs, subs is just gonna tell you that you have to be a subscriber. So yes, we are a subscriber to Hoopla. We can watch that on Hoopla. Let's see, Arrival, if I click on that, it looks like you have to be subscribed to Paramount Plus or you can rent it from Apple TV for $3.99. Looks like it's also on Hulu. Hmm, I wonder why the watch now is different for the streaming. I'm not sure. Uh, can you put in a filter for documentaries? That's probably one of the genres, I'm guessing. I think so. Let's see. Um, I think you have to make a search and then filter it after you do your search. I don't think you can just pare it down to documentaries. Let's go to watch list and see. No. Maybe here. Let's mm -hmm. see. Yeah, where it says genres. Mm -hmm. Yes, here we go. So let's do documentary and then I think we just click off of it. Yes. Why is that into darkness showing up? Because that's not a documentary. That's strange. Did you refer did you yeah, um, let me refresh it. the rest of them too? Filters. Let's see. You pick genres. If you do it's just showing documentary set, because all of them have check marks though at that point. I think if you click on it, it highlights it. Okay. Even though the other ones have a check mark, it has to be highlighted. Okay. I don't know why that is showing up. Hmm. Yeah, because it doesn't look like it did a search. Some of these for are you. are not documentaries either. No. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe you have to if you pick. Um, sorted by popularity too, maybe by relevance instead, down below where it says sorted by popularity. What's your other option? IMDb score release here, nope, okay. Yeah, I think you just have to play around with it and see what works. Mm -hmm. I, something seems wrong though with that. It should not be showing your regular movies if you're clicking documentary. <laughs> That's kind of weird. But for the most part, I find very, um, I find this website very useful. Any questions about Just Watch or I can plug something in if anybody has a suggestion. No suggestions so far. Okay. Let me get out of the site here. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up, but we have a little glossary that I have attached as well for some of the stuff that um, we covered today. 
So you'll see 4K resolution, buffering. I talked about buffering. Um, I, I, I find that a little antiquated now. I don't hear too much about buffering anymore. But basically, if you have a slow connection, you might experience buffering because when you're streaming something, it's not going quick enough to fill that next amount of data. So it's kind of slowed itself so that it can, it can catch up. We talked about cutting the cord, cord nevers. Um, you might have also heard of DSL before. So that's a digital subscriber line. It's a type of connection that you use on the internet that allows for uploading and downloading. So DSL internet, you probably heard of before. A DVR, that's, that's a pretty common one. Um, you probably have heard of that when it comes to recording a show. So you might have recorded something to your DVR. So basically that's allowing you to connect to your TV and record a show, a movie, so that you don't have to have like a tape or something like that. It's, do, it's done digitally. I say DVR is more in line with like a cable subscription. So you might have a DVR included on that. Next slide, please. That's weird, it's like stuck on this slide. I right, just using the arrow key or the scroll me. scroll wheel. Let's see. There we go. We talked about HD. Again, that's high definition. So HD video. A lot of stuff recently is in 4K. That's even higher definition. I think HD definition is 1080p. That's 1080. You probably heard of that before. 4K, I think, is literally 4,000. Um, I'm not too familiar with 4K, actually. I don't have a 4K DVD player, but there are 4K DVDs out there. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about ISP, so that's your internet service provider. Live streaming is a pretty common thing nowadays, especially with Zoom. We are live streaming right now through our webinar. So that's a broadcast of an event in real time over the internet. We talked about megabits per second. So that's your unit of measurement for your internet speed. On demand, we talked about previously as well. That's when you get to choose when you want to watch your video or listen to your music. Um, over the air, we didn't talk too much about that. You may have uh, heard of that before. Basically, um, that's content provided through a service provider via cable, satellite, or broadcast. Um, over the top is content directly streamed over the internet and it by bypasses cable, satellite, or broadcast companies. It's generally accessed without requiring a private network or box. I don't think over the top is too common of a phrase it's, anymore. No, it's it's more often um, when you're setting up your connections that folks that you're setting up your connections with might talk about it being over the top. So like when you're setting up with your ISP. So SD, you may have heard of SD before, that's standard definition. So that's lesser quality than HD video. A lot of older things like DVD versus Blu-ray, right? So DVD would be more in standard definition. HD would probably be a Blu-ray quality definition. And the cost changes based on whether you're what you want to rent something in SD or HD when you're doing streaming too. Yes, I've noticed that um, I subscribe to Amazon Prime and they do have a different price point for if you're renting something in HD versus standard definition. That's a good point, Susan. We talked about a smart TV. So again, that's a TV that is integrated with internet connectivity and allows your um, access to apps, additional accessories, streaming, stuff like that. We talked about streaming, of course, that's playing continuously as sound or moving images are sent in a flow directly from the internet to your device. So that could be your computer, your TV, et cetera. Um, streaming media, we talked about that, of course, the whole time. So I'm not gonna go too much into that. Video on demand, you may have heard of VOD. So that allows users to choose when they wanna watch or listen to TV or movie content. 
So it's pretty much the same thing as on demand, but you may have heard of it as VOD. Wi-Fi, of course, that's a very common thing nowadays. So that's the standard wireless local area network technology for connecting computers and electronic devices. So you can connect to our Wi-Fi if you're here in the library and use that to maybe watch a movie or get online, send emails, what have you. So here are the links that I was talking about previously. So this is gonna have some of the stuff that some guides out there have. So for instance, PC Magazine has some information for streaming services. Consumer Reports also has a lot of stuff out there. So they have a guide to streaming services as well as stuff for streaming devices. I can link those as well. I've got that link for Just Watch if you wanted to find your search engine. Um, Tom's Guide also has some really good pros and cons stuff on their website. So if you're looking for a streaming device and you're not sure which one you want, check out Tom's Guide. They're pretty good at laying everything out pretty, pretty easily. And then I put a website there that has different internet test speed sites. We didn't talk about music streaming really, but there are a lot of different services for streaming music. Um, you've probably heard of Spotify or Pandora. Those are some streaming services for music. Um, we are going to talk about podcasts coming up as well. So I'm going to show our little list of upcoming classes. But intro to podcasts is going to be one that we have covered soon. Um, and CNET also has this 100 channels compared. So maybe you're wanting to disconnect from your cable TV and you're wanting to know what services have certain channels. So for instance, maybe you wanna make sure you have HDTV or the Food Network or um, your sports channels. So what's gonna offer that streaming? Check out that CNET article. Okay, I know that was a lot of information to throw at you, but here is my info. Um, I can take more questions too. If you have any questions, you can raise your hand or put them in chat. But of course, I am able to answer questions after the class as well. So you can always shoot me an email or leave a message on my phone. Okay, and, Rebecca, we yeah. do have uh -huh. another, another raised hand. So I'm going to go ahead and allow them to talk. Sure. Okay, so you should see a thing that says ask to unmute. I'm hoping. Hi there. Hi, coming in loud and clear. Can you hear us okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. During the course of this presentation, I found that my computer, uh, when you went to share something, went totally to buzz and I had no control whatsoever. In the same household, on the same service, went to my husband's computer and I could follow the rest of your presentation. Is there a reason that mine freezes? Hmm. It would hard. It would be hard to say without seeing your experience. Um, it could be something to do with your internet connection. I I can't pinpoint something exactly without seeing your your computer or your experience. No. Yeah. But if you did miss something too, we will have um, the email with the recording, so you could you could watch whatever you might have missed when she shared her screen too. What I was trying to determine was the speed we were getting and why his computer could find you and mine couldn't. But yes, I can well understand you didn't hear the buzz and you didn't see the freeze. So I will just use his computer when, in fact, I need to watch it all. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Any other questions for Rebecca? If anybody has anything going in the chat, that's okay too. Um, I have this list of stuff coming up. Like I was saying, we're gonna have that intro to finding podcasts. You've probably heard of podcasts before. They're pretty similar to radio shows or um, even audiobooks, a lot of the stuff you can listen to as an episode or as a season, and it is a sort of streaming service, but there is an option to download. So it's pretty similar to some of the stuff we're talking about today, and we're going to cover some of the different podcast apps that you can get on certain devices. 
So we'll talk about the Apple Podcasts app. We'll talk about the Google Podcasts app during that class. And we're also going to cover some social media stuff. So we're going to talk about Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok is our newest class. Um, that's one of the newest social media websites. Or It's more of an app. TikTok is not really a website. It's more of an app. And then, of course, we have our Book of Librarian service as well. If you're interested in getting help one-on-one, -on -one, you can always go onto our website, champagne.org slash book a librarian, fill out the form there, and then we'll contact you to get a time to meet together. And of course, you can always reach out. Um, you can reach out by email. You can reach out by chat. So there's live chat available on our website at champagne.org. And that will go to our reference people on the information desk, and we can chat with you live. But other than that, I think that's it for today, unless anybody has any more questions. Great. Do you want to go back to your, your video screen? Yeah, let me stop my share. I just want to keep that Excellent. up in case anybody wanted to write down <laughs> yes. what was coming up. <laughs> yes, we'll go ahead and switch back to gallery view. Take you off spotlight there. All right. Any I know other that was a lot of info for today. Yeah. And again, you can feel free to reach out. As, as Rebecca said, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I think I did just see a hand. One second. Let me double check and make sure. Nope. Okay. I guess I don't see it now. Um, but if you did have your hand raised, please uh, let us know or put it in the chat. Oh, we do have a hand raised. Okay. There we go. Okay. All righty. You should see an, uh, an ask to unmute here. There you go. Okay. I think I unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Rebecca, thank you. That was excellent. Enjoyed it a lot and learned a lot. Um, and especially I thought that justwatch.com was a, a great suggestion. I appreciated also how you reviewed some of the, to me, quite foreign terminology <laughs> at the end of your presentation. So thank yes. you. Yes, of course. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for I, joining us. <laughs> I know that technology is almost like its own language, so it really helps to learn those words. That way, when you're interacting with some of the stuff, you, you've got a, kind of your feet on the ground before you get going. And I also did some of your um, classes in July. So thank you for, for your comrades. Of <laughs> course. Too. Yeah, thank you yes. for attending. Absolutely. Thank you. This is yeah. one of my favorite classes because I'm a big streamer. Same. <laughs> so I like to talk about streaming and it's fun to connect people with it. Some people think they just have to stream stuff on their phone or their tablet and they're kind of like, oh, I don't want to have to be hunched over my laptop or something. But it's nice to be able to show people that, no, yeah, you can watch it on your TV and enjoy it that way. Sit back and relax. Yep. And I find I watch I watch a lot of documentaries before I go to bed at night and um you know, I, I do watch them on an, iP on an iPad, <laughs> which is the smaller screen a lot of the times, but then I will go into the other room and, you know, cue it up uh, again through Hoopla uh, or Canopy and then cue it up on my, my TV in the living room that's much bigger um, and just watch, you know, watch things while I'm doing, you know, vacuuming or other chore, dusting, whatever other chores in the house um, so that I can, uh, you know, watch some interesting content. So, yeah. Yes. And I like this one too, because it always, you know, since it changes so quickly, um, you know, and being able to kind of stay uh, close to the, close to the edge of, of what's going on and what's happening um, helps us too, because then we can, we can better inform um, everybody else of what's going on. And, you know, some of those places like PC Magazine, where they have the industry and kind of get the room, get to hear the rumors before of what's coming <laughs> can then help us out. Like, when HBO Go changes to Max, then changes to whatever else. And then we know if things have changed names and stuff so we can pass it on. Yeah, I know I have to always go when we're doing our intro to streaming, I have to go, okay, what's new this time around? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and because it just, it is a, I mean, it's a, it's all a, I wouldn't say it's saturated because everybody has their own content, but because everybody has their own content, you know, if you hear about a really good show from someone, then you have to basically ask, you know, Oh, uh, what streaming network is it even on and yes. whether or not you can get it. And then the other thing is that a lot of streaming networks uh, aren't releasing their content on mm -hmm. DVD until, um, 
more time has passed. Uh, so it can be a longer wait before you can get it on DVD. Um, mm -hmm. because they want, yeah, because they want to encourage you to, to join the streaming service instead. So, yeah, I think that's the thing that I see most trending towards is stuff not being released as a physical piece of media. So you're, we're not seeing as many DVDs for certain titles because they're just not releasing them. Yeah. It, um, it kind of stinks for libraries. Rebecca, will you show us how to get to the library's YouTube channel so that folks can find the video for the Hoopla and Canopy Yes, class? yes. That's a great me... question. Um, Rebecca's gonna go ahead and demo that now. Oop, let me open that back up. Let me get a, a website <laughs> open here. Sure. I accidentally closed it. And I'm gonna go ahead and lower your hand, but if you had another question, feel free to raise it again. I just wanna make sure I'm catching everyone here. Where did I go? Sorry, I lost it. I minimized my screen accidentally. Oops. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's go on our website. So there's a couple different ways you can access YouTube on our website. So if you go to champagne.org, you're going to see this YouTube link right here on the front. But we change our website pretty often. Um, you might not see this link in the future. There is another way to get there. You can scroll all the way to the bottom of our website and click on this little arrow pointing to the right here. That's the YouTube link. And that'll bring you to our YouTube. There is also one more way. If you go to champagne.org slash YouTube, then it will bring you to, hopefully it'll pull up here, where it says library webinars on YouTube. And then you can click where it says go to YouTube. And then for us, our stuff is under the Tech Workshops playlist. So if I click on that. So the first thing that's going to pull up is our most recently, like our most recently added um, recording. But on the right hand side here, you'll notice all of the stuff we have uploaded to the playlist. So let's see. So get to know your e-library, movies, music, and more. That's the class that we had that was based on Hoopla and Canopy. And if I click on that, that's going to take me right to the video. And you'll see I taught this class too. Um, and I can jump forward in it so that you can see. I did demonstrate it on a tablet. So I did it both on an iPad and um, on an Android device. But the good news is you can still get these apps on a TV. So if you have a smart TV or a streaming device, you can get both the, hand, the Hoopla and Canopy app on those devices. And if you don't have a Champagne library card, um, please check with your local library. Uh, for example, Urbana, I know Urbana has Hoopla and Canopy as well. Uh, so the, the tutorial should basically be exactly the same. You'd just be putting in your Urbana card number uh, and PIN instead of your Champagne number and PIN. Yes. So yes, I will also include this link with the um, email that goes out with our recording so that you'll have that there as well. Thank you, Rebecca. Appreciate yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Very good questions at the end there too. <laughs> All good questions today. <laughs> Oh, and we have a question. Um, how can you get the handouts from the presentations on YouTube? So if you see anything on YouTube that you want the handout for, you can always email Susan or I, and we can send you the handout. Yeah. Um, or you could email librarian at champagne.org and just let them know which class it was, and they can, they can um, print it out for you and have it here for you to pick up curbside too, if you'd like. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we print them out for people as well. Yeah. I, even though I'm the technology librarian, I still like having things in print that I can write on <laughs> helps with my learning process. Um, so we can always do that for you too. Thank you. Great question. Any other questions? All right. Well, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and um, say goodbye for today. And thank you all for coming today to learn about uh, our, stream, our streaming services here at the library and um, kind of the world of streaming services. Uh, in this one, we did focus more on movies and music, but uh, next week with our Finding Podcast class, we'll talk about um, more like what is the kind of internet radio and podcasts that are episodic 
um, and talk about how to get those uh, and that content as well. So, all right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.